and welcome back to New Ask Science Practicals. I'm Miss Parsons and today we're going to be looking at a chemistry practical called How Do Metals React With Oxygen? So it's 6.2.4, How Do Metals React With Oxygen? And the aims of today's lesson is to be able to um, see how metals react with oxygen when they burn in air. And we're also going to be able to record their observations to decide which one reacts most easily with oxygen. Okay, some skills that we're going to acquire today, we're going to be able to use observations and data, okay, to make conclusions, and we're going to be able to give reasoned explanations. So this worksheet should have been set to you by your teacher. So if we have a quick read through, so we're doing 6.2.4 practical sheet, and uh, we're doing how do metals react with oxygen. So some metals react more easily with oxygen than others. You can tell which metal reacts more easily by watching them burn. And that's exactly what we're going to do today. We have four metals that we're going to be looking at today. We're going to be using iron filings. Okay, so using iron. We're going to use calcium. We're going to use copper. And we are going to use magnesium, okay? And by the end of the lesson, we're going to be able to make a conclusion out of which one of those four metals react the easily easiest, okay, with oxygen in our air. So let's have a look through our safety. So we've got magnesium powder is highly flammable. So we're not going to directly look at that as that is burning is our, in our Bunsen burner, okay? And um, we're going to be using iron filings and they can irritate the eyes. Calcium, again, is highly flammable, so we're not going to directly look at that as it is burning, and we're going to wear eye protection throughout. So, the first thing I want you to do is have a look at the hypothesis. So our hypothesis is said, what is a product when a metal reacts with oxygen? So please pause the video and fill in the hypothesis. So what products do we form when a metal reacts with oxygen? Okay, so hopefully you've made that hypothesis now. Now, the next thing I want you to do is your prediction. So predict the product of the reaction between magnesium and oxygen. So what products do we form when magnesium reacts with oxygen? Okay, if you could write that down and pause the video. Okay, so we will see if your prediction is right at the end of the video. So if we have a look through our method, we're going to collect one sample of each metal and a pair of tongs. We're going to heat each sample using a pair of tongs in a blue flame using our Bunsen burner for 30 to 60 seconds. And we're going to record what we see, our observations in our table. Okay, this is the support sheet which you should have also been assigned for this lesson. So please have this open so we can fill this in together. Then we're going to write our word equation in that right hand column. So we're going to start. Okay, so the first metal that we're going to start with is our um, copper. So I've got some copper here. So we're going to do four mini experiments. We're going to do one with copper. Um, then magnesium, iron and calcium. Okay, we're going to compare their reaction with oxygen in the air. Okay, we're also going to use magnesium um, with a high concentration of oxygen um, later on in the video. But we're just going to start with copper first. So on my teacher's notes that I've got here, it wasn't actually on your worksheet, I've got exactly the method to follow. So it says, when reacting copper with oxygen, hold a piece of copper into the Bunsen burner using tongs. So here I have my tongs, okay, and I've got my piece of copper. I'm going to pick this one. I'm going to bring that up to the camera so you can see what it looks like before. Okay, so you can see it's quite shiny. Quite shiny piece of copper there. And we're going to see how it looks once it has been in our blue flame, our hot flame, for roughly 30 seconds. Okay, so I've got my blue flame now. And we're going to see what happens once I've put this copper in there for roughly 30 seconds or so. OK, 
Okay, so I can see a slight change of colour and I can see that the outside of the copper is changing colour to more like a grey black colour. I'll leave it in for a bit longer and then I'll hold it up to the camera for you. Now make sure you've made your prediction about what the product is going to be made here. So I'm obviously reacting oxygen, which is in the air. This room is full of oxygen, okay? Air, remember, is a mixture of lots of different gases, oxygen being one of them. Okay, so this copper is reacting with the oxygen in the air. And have a think about what that product's going to be called. Okay, so I'll hold that up. To the camera for you so what you can see now is that original shiny strip of copper okay has now gone to this dull black color so have a think what that dull black coating might be called okay so let's have a look in our table so our observations so the one we've just done is copper okay so copper, our observations. So it went from a shiny orange metal, okay, to a black solid. Okay, we've got that black solid coating on top of our usually um, orange shiny copper. So have a think about the equation that might represent this reaction. So pause the video and try and fill in this box before I show you. Okay, so let's go through it together. So we've reacted copper with oxygen, which is, remember, in our air, in our lab. And what we're going to have formed is our solid copper oxide, okay? Our copper oxide. And copper oxide has this characteristic black colour. So that's what was coating our shiny orange metal. Okay, so we're going to go on to our next metal now, and we're next going to go on to iron filings, okay? So on my method, it says when reacting iron with oxygen, sprinkle iron filings into a tilted Bunsen flame. So that's exactly what I'm going to do. I am just going to hold these up to the camera so you can have a look at what the iron, iron filings look like before they've reacted with the oxygen, okay? So hopefully you can see there, that they've got this like dark grey, nearly black, but slightly shiny colour, okay? So it's going to be quite hard to show you what they look like after, but I can always hold the video, um, the camera over so that you can see what they look like. But I'm going to put this onto a blue flame. I'm going to have to be able to multitask here to be able to hold my Bunsen burner at a tilt and sprinkle some of these through the flame okay i'm going to try and collect them on this heat proof mat that i've got here okay so you can see some sparks there okay so you should have been able to see as those iron filings were passing through the bunsen burner we got those bright white um, sparks. Okay, there wasn't many of them, but there was a few um, white sparks. And what I can see now on my heat proof mat is the colour of these iron filings has gone slightly darker. Okay, so have a think about what that product might be from the iron filings reacting with oxygen in the air. Okay, so once again, we're going to fill in our table. So our observations... When we tilted um, our Bunsen burner and had our iron filings going through that blue hot flame, what we saw, we saw some white sparks. Okay, we saw those white sparks as we were passing through the Bunsen burner. And then um, our product was a black solid okay it got a bit darker obviously originally it was a dark gray but it did get slightly darker so have a think look at our copper example that we've already done and try and work out the iron plus oxygen equation for yourself okay so pause the video and have a go at that for yourself just for a second okay so let's try it together then it's going to be very very similar 
So this time our metal was iron, we reacted it with oxygen, and our product is iron oxide. So you should see a common occurrence here. Iron with oxygen gave us iron oxide, copper with oxygen has given us copper oxide, okay? Okay, so we're going on to our third metal now, and now we're going to look at magnesium. So what I have done, if I bring this up to the camera, I've got some magnesium just coiled up at the bottom of this spoon. And the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to hold it into the Bunsen burner to see how it reacts with air, okay, and the oxygen in the air, because remember, air is a mixture of gases. And then what I've got here is I've got a cylinder that's filled just with oxygen. So I've just filled that with pure oxygen, and we're going to see how the flame and the um, colour that we get from burning the magnesium changes from it reacting with the oxygen in the air, which is going to be in a lower concentration, to it being in the um, cylinder. So what I'm going to do first is I'm going to hold it in here for maybe 20 seconds, and then I'm going to quickly take off the lid from the oxygen and put it straight in there. So hopefully you'll be able to see that on both cameras. If we were in school today, when we were looking at this demonstration, I would have told you to put your hand over your eyes with them slightly open. Okay, because looking at the magnesium burning can um, actually damage your eyes slightly. Absolutely fine to watch through the camera and through your screen, but what I'll be doing is I won't be looking at it directly because it can damage your eyes. So let's get going. So I'm gonna put it straight into the Bunsen burner, then quickly put it into the oxygen and make sure you're looking really closely at which one is brighter. Okay, so hopefully what you saw during that was as I took the magnesium out of the Bunsen burner, you saw that bright white flame, and then straight when I put it into this cylinder, there was a much brighter white flame, okay? If you'd actually seen that in person, that would have definitely made your eyes hurt a little bit. So what we could definitely see there is when the magnesium was burning in a high concentration of oxygen it was a more vigorous reaction that's why we got that brighter white flame so i'm going to go over to the visualizer and we'll write that one down in our table so we're down here now looking at magnesium so our observations what we saw we'll split this um column in um sorry this row in half so we've got the one that was in air we saw a bright white flame okay and then the one that was in the oxygen that had a high concentration okay that oxygen uh, cylinder it was a brighter white flame okay so now we have our equations for iron with oxygen and copper with oxygen okay both of those have made the metal oxide and this was what your prediction was so your prediction if you remember was to predict the pro product of the reaction between magnesium and oxygen. So we're gonna see if your prediction was right now. So hopefully, based on the last two, you would be able to do this nice and quickly now. So magnesium plus oxygen gives us magnesium oxide, okay? So exactly the same as the others again, metal plus oxygen gives you metal oxide, Iron plus oxygen gives you iron oxide, copper plus oxygen gives you copper oxide, magnesium plus oxygen has given us magnesium oxide. Now, what would be useful to do here is actually have a think back to our aims, which was to see which one of these metals reacts the quickest and the easiest with oxygen. So if we rank these three that we've done so far, 
okay? The copper, we didn't see any flame or any sparks when we did the copper, okay? We just saw that black solid being formed. So I would say this was the least reactive. So we're gonna name that number four, or number that number four. Iron was definitely less reactive than the magnesium because we only got a few white sparks as we passed that through the Bunsen burner. And then we have our magnesium that at the moment is our most reactive. So let's have a look at calcium and see where that fits in. Okay, so we're going on to our last metal now and we're going to be looking at calcium. So it's um, the similar type of apparatus as the magnesium one. So I've got my spoon, if I hold it up to the camera, you can see I've got granulated calcium here. So it's like little, um, little sections of calcium so it's not one ribbon like the magnesium was it's been split up in smaller bits so i'm going to do the exact same thing i'm going to put it into my blue flame if we were in the lab and we were at school again i would tell you not to look at the flame when it's produced okay but you're absolutely fine looking at it through your computer screen but i might turn away when it gets really really bright okay so it doesn't damage my eyes just as a safety precaution so again, I'm going to hold this into my Bunsen burner and then you're going to write down your observation. So unfortunately, it looks like our calcium is not going to react, okay? And that's not because calcium doesn't react with oxygen, because it does react with oxygen. It reacts with oxygen very easily, okay? The easiest out of our four metals. And because of that, I think my sample of calcium that I've actually got um, has already oxidized. So remember, when something reacts with oxygen, it's called an oxidation reaction. And calcium is that reactive with oxygen. I think it's actually already reacted with the presence of oxygen in the air and um, that it didn't need the Bunsen burner. That it's, so it's already reacted and got that calcium oxide layer. OK, and it's quite difficult to get through that calcium oxide layer once it's been formed. So unfortunately, that one's not worked, but we can still write in our results table what we would have seen if it had worked and that calcium oxide layer hadn't been formed prior to the reaction. Okay, so we're still gonna fill in our table as if the reaction had actually happened. Um, and maybe we'll be able to find a video to send to you guys about what um, actually happens when calcium reacts with oxygen, where it's actually worked. Um, but what we'll put is what would have happened is calcium, is that reactive with oxygen, it would have reacted more vigorously than our magnesium. Okay, so we would have seen another bright white flame, but it would have been brighter than our magnesium that we used earlier. It would have been similar to that flame that we saw when magnesium was added into that oxygen column. So again, pause the video, try and write your word equation for when calcium reacts with oxygen. Okay, you've got three to look at so far, so you should be able to do that one now. So pause the video and then we'll see if we get the same answer. Okay, so calcium plus oxygen goes to calcium oxide, okay? And unfortunately for us, that calcium oxide had been made so quickly, um, just from me opening that sample of calcium that we had in school, okay, that our calcium oxide had been made and that's quite hard to remove um, even when we're putting it into the Bunsen burner. So we've got our table filled in now, okay? And we've numbered our metals based on how reactive they are with oxygen. So copper was the least reactive, iron the next least reactive, then magnesium was the second most reactive and calcium was our most reactive, okay? So if we go back to our questions, so I'd like you to pause the video, okay? And spend a good amount of time trying these questions. So you've got questions one, um, to question three that everybody should be trying and then if you want to challenge yourself you've got extension questions one to three as well.
Okay, so thank you for watching that practical. Hopefully you've enjoyed it and you've learned more about metal oxides and how metals react with oxygen. So if we look back at our aims, our first aim for today was to be able to react metals with oxygen. Okay, we've definitely been able to do that with three of our metals, not so well with the calcium, but we've been able to predict what would have happened. And then we've been able to record our observations to decide which one out of our metals reacts the easiest with oxygen. So we've definitely hit both of those aims. So well done. Please now spend some time finishing off that practical sheet. And I've been Miss Parsons. Today we've been looking at how metals react with oxygen. And I'll see you next week for another science practical at NUAST.